Hello and welcome back to my channel where I do whatever I want whenever I want to and today we are back in the Plains Village and this is the Fletcher's house that we did last time with its grand piano and I have only done this one and the cleric so far. This is going to take me 84 years to finish but I'm very happy with what I have done so far. I really like them and today we are going to be doing the toolsmith's house which I am really very excited about. I have some cool ideas, but first, I must uh, tear this thing down, and then we can get to building the new one. And this is the foundation that I have for myself right now. So it might look a little bit confusing, but the, the light blue wool here is meant to be a, a market sort of thing that's going to open up to this middle market area. Kind of like how there's, there's barrels here, where the Fletcher can sell into this middle area. This is going to be the same kind of thing. And then the the cyan color is where there's going to be some work spaces. And then the blue is going to be the, the house proper. And then this purple here is going to be a different surprise thing that I'm not going to say. Why isn't looking? There we go. Where did my face go for just a split second there? And the, the purple thing is going to be something else that I am not going to show you just quite yet. But soon. Right now it's a surprise. So let me lay the foundations and replace these colors and um, then I will be back with you in a second. So here's what I'm imagining. This is going to be the market bit, right? And then you would go down here. This is where a bunch of stuff would get made. So there will be like bellows and other uh, other things they use. I don't know the names for anything. You know, the molds and stuff. Then down here, there will be something. I haven't decided which one of the things I'm putting down there. A little bit of storage off to the sides. And then this will go right into the house, which I'm imagining that the back room maybe is a little bit lower. And then maybe the, the front area here is on the regular level. There can be like a, a sitting room here and then off to the sides, a bedroom and something else. Maybe two bedrooms. I don't want them both to be bedrooms. Something is going to be different. And then here there's going to be the entrance to the street of the stuff. So <laughs> on this street, I have the toolsmith and the weaponsmith and the mason and the armor person all on the same street. And so I want a sort of entryway into this street that's like appropriately themed, that gives you an introduction of like, hey, this is where we're going. I don't know what I want to name the street yet, but I want it to all be like thematically centered around this one thing, like, you know, the tools, the weapons, the the armor, all of that stuff centered in this one street. So that's going to be the entry point to this. So now I have to decide what I want to begin with. And I'm pretty sure I want to make the house first. That way I can shape the stuff outside around the house. I'm thinking something... I'm thinking something long and low. So it's definitely not going to be a towering thing like this, because this needed to be really high for the Fletcher so they can see out of here and go pew pew. <laughs> but this one doesn't need that. So longer, lower, more akin to that kind of, but a little bit different as well. And uh, then we'll work on the outside. I have a pretty clear idea of this. I don't think I need to figure out too terribly much. I just need to finagle the roof shape a little bit. So we'll see how it comes out. Wish me luck. Here is how it is looking right now. Let me break this down a little bit. So, like I said earlier, this is going to be the little market kind of area where it's going to open up and have uh, some things that are selling some things into this, this square, the central square. Now, this part I really, really like. So, this is meant to be the, the thing where you melt down the, the metal and then it... These are like little little walkways where you can walk over cross of it and over cross of it. That's not... Anyways, where you can walk over it and not burned it. But it's meant to be the, the thingy where the, the molten metal goes through the little rivulets and goes into a thing to make a thing. So like this could be 
a hoe. And this is meant to be a sword. This is meant to be a pickaxe. Actually, this was meant to be an axe, wasn't it? It looks like a hoe, though. That's okay. It could be either. All in your perspective. But yeah, this is the, the tool making area. And I wish that you could lava log blocks so I could like put it flowing through here. But the idea would be you let that go. It pulls down here. And then you can say like, oh, I want you to go down this way. And it would make a little pickaxe. And yeah, I really like the the look of this. I like how it looks. I look how I like how it would work. I'm really, really happy with this. This part of the build, I changed up the roofing a little bit here to make it look like it had been singed or burned or sootified, which on that note, I want to um I want to add some soot looking stuff, especially in the middle here. I'm thinking with the deep slate tiles. It looks kind of like bricks that are covered in soot, right? So we're just gonna pop a few of those in just to make that effect a little bit more pronounced. And then I want to take these blocks and put more of them around these uh, lava bits because this is where the stone would get cracked more often from all of this heat right through here. And I think that's looking pretty good. That way it just makes sense, you know? The, the stone is getting more cracked near all of this heat. So, the vision that I have in mind is that the the heat to this is going to be supplied through some ducts that are running underneath the floor and it's going to be pumped in through here. So I'm going to make a bellows here that's kind of pointing into a chamber in the wall that I would imagine is going through. I have no idea if this is feasibly how it could ever work in real life, but this is how it works in my mind, right? So just let it happen. And uh, then I'm going to finish up this back area and the market. And then we'll begin on the innards of the house. But yeah, I wanna, I wanna finish up this back first. I am loving this so far. So let's jump into a time lapse. And here it is. Let me clear out my inventory. So this is the little market area. It's nothing very fancy at all, but there's this gate that goes into the smithing area. And this is looking so cool. I have these piles of ores here, right? We got the iron, we got the gold, we have the hidden diamond with the, the smithing tables themselves. This is smithing, right? It doesn't tell me, but I'm sure, yes it is, it's smithing. <laughs> so we have all that. I put up a bunch of iron bars everywhere. There's this little uh, prison looking window right here. And then there's some lanterns poking up every once in a while. This is, ooh, you see a little puff of it right there? This is a little smokestack coming from down here with the bellows, which is what I imagine is connected up to here. So let's go take a look at them. This is what I have created. You can see steam puffing out from the floor in here as well. And I don't, I know that bellows get pumped. So I imagine that this is like a, a pumping thing it's all pushing the, the air through here, and then that air is going to get channeled through a, a passageway into here. That's what my imagination says. So that's the, that's the vibe. That's why it looks the way that it looks. And of course, you put a bunch of dead earth and plants and pebbles and stuff around it because of all of the fire that doesn't really let the plants grow too close. And I really love the way that this looks. This is so cool. And so now it is time for the innards. I'm not gonna do a time lapse of this one. I am just going to snap to the moment that it is done. And we're done. Let me give you a walkthrough. Ignore that. This is the front door. This is how it's looking now. There's a lovely little chimney, a little spire up at the top. Also, I completely forgot to add these, but there's anvils out here now. So that's good. Um, you know what, let's go through the back door now, now that we're back here. This is what the back door is looking like. And then this is the innards. Here is the main room, there's a chandelier. The, the toolsmith is showing off all of his wonderful work in here. 
On this side, there is a sort of indoor workstation. So there's a miniature bellows that goes into some lava or melted metal, I guess, and water to cool it and a, a little anvil to work it. There's some more smithing tables and things that he's made. And then this is the... <laughs> The living chambers, in my mind, for whatever reason, the toolsmith is a very messy person. And so it's a very, very cluttered living space. You can barely get up onto the bed. And there's just like a lot of a lot of stuff laying around everywhere. And then that, of course, is the chimney that goes out to the outside of the house. So this is the insides. It's modest. But I imagine that the toolsmith spends most of his time out here instead. Now, let's actually bring in one. We need somebody to live here. So let's grab a little villager. See if we can get it to accept this trade. Yeah! Are you... Oh, I didn't mean to make a baby. But now you have a baby. Get, get this baby a bed. Where'd the baby go? The baby's gone. What did you do? I don't know. But... It... Oh, are you going out there to work? Yeah, you should just do some work over there. Wait, where are you going? Where are you going? You don't like your house? Where are you going? Well, non-compliant. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> right now, we have one more thing to work on before... Oh, there's the baby. Hello. Trying to make a break for it. Don't want to live here. Anyways, we got one more thing before this build is... Oh, wow, look at this. Look at all of these together. Sorry, I got distracted. Because, like, look at this. Oh, man, this looks so good. Anyways, we got one more thing before we consider this done. And that is this gateway here. Which, now that there's a chimney here, I might pull this over just a little bit. We might do it like this instead one two three four five and then put this right here yeah there we go all right let's jump into one more time lapse <laughs> to the, uh, I don't know what to call it yet. If you have suggestions for what to call it, put it down in the comments, but the, the street for the tools and the armor and weapons and stuff. And that's gonna be this whole street. All of them are going to be devoted to this kind of thing. And then we'll have the, the masons over there as well. There's an iron golem that has spawned. We finally have enough villagers. I wanna see if the toolsmith is still in here. Are you still, are you in your home? Has, has it completely, has it completely abandoned its job? Is it over there? Yeah. There's our toolsmith. Right? Wait, is that the leather worker? And that thing? Ah, uh, it might be, it might be. I don't know where our toolsmith has gotten off to. But, he's gone, wait, is that, are you him? Hello? No, you're a mason. I don't know where the toolsmith is. Gone. Gone. Um, anyways, I want to show you just a couple other build tips and tricks that I put into effect here. When I'm using a lot of different blocks in a build, mixing them up like this with the, the crack stone and the cobblestone and the bricks and the regular stone, I don't like to just do it completely at random. I like to have a plan. So I already talked about the crack stone, right? It's near heat sources, especially, which makes sense, right? In these builds, the cobblestone is more often at the bottom. There's a few times where it's a little higher up, like right there, but usually it's around the bottoms. You, you can't see it very well from the inside because of all the stuff. Let's look at the outside. There we go. Because if this place was crumbling, it would be the cobblestone that would be crumbling, right? And then there's usually more smooth stone. Well, it's not smooth stone, but you know what I mean. Regular stone up at the top because it's going to be a little bit less crumbled there. And then these, these little buttons, make great pebbles. So in something that's dilapidated like this, using these buttons to symbolize or signify little rocks, little bits of rocks that have split off, is a great thing to do. Now in this, 
making something look dilapidated like this, right? I started with just the regular stone brick and built it how I would think it would have looked like to begin with. With the exception of some of these bars, I imagine that it was kind of like spiky to show off all the metal work that they had been doing on this street, but I start with just the stone, and then I put cobblestone where I want it to be a little bit more dilapidated, right? Because the cobblestone is signifying it's crumbling a little bit. So I replaced all the cobblestone that I put in here with the stair variants to make it look like it's falling apart. And sometimes they're facing this way, you can see through them. Sometimes they're like this, so there's just little bits that are missing. Here there's a whole chunk of the wall that's come out. And then I went in with the vines put some string around so it doesn't spread in places where I don't want it to, and then the leaves. And in some places I replace the stone with the leaves, or maybe the leaves have completely eaten it away and replaced it entirely. Same thing with the roof here. It's kind of just winding its way through them and eating away at them, and I think it looks absolutely magnificent. So, this is the toolsmith's house. We got the small little market area. We have the tool making place. We have the underground bellows down here, pumping air into this to keep it molten. We have the inside with his little indoor working space and very cluttered bed. You know, maybe this is why he moved out. Maybe he didn't want to live here. And then we have the entrance to our metal working street. Let me know which house I should do next. And if you haven't, then consider subscribing for more videos like this one. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.